all things bright and beautiful by cecil francis alexander eighteen eighteen to eighteen ninety five read for librivox dot org all things bright and beautiful all creatures great and small all things wise and wonderful the lord god made them all each little flower that opens each little bird that sings he made their glowing colors he made their tiny wings the rich man in his castle the poor man at his gate god made them high or lowly and ordered their estate the purple-headed mountain the river running by the morning and the sunset that lighted up the sky the cold wind in the winter the pleasant summer sun the ripe fruits in the garden he made them every one the tall trees in the greenwood the meadows where we play the rushes by the water we gather every day he gave us eyes to see them and lips that we might tell how great is god almighty who hath made all things well End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. The Ballad of Father Gilligan by William Butler Yeats. Read for LibriVox.org by Larry Wilson. The old priest Peter Gilligan was weary night and day, for half his flock were in their beds or under green sods lay once while he nodded on a chair at the moth hour of eve another poor man sent to him and he began to grieve i have no rest nor joy nor peace for people die and die and after he cried god forgive my body spake not i he knelt and leaning on the chair he prayed and fell asleep and the moth hour went from the fields and stars began to peep they slowly into millions grew and leaves shook in the wind and god covered the world with shade and whispered to mankind upon the time of sparrow chirp when the moths came once more the old priest peter gilligan stood upright on the floor maroon maroon the man has died while i slept on the chair he roused his horse out of its sleep and rode with little care he rode now as he never rode by rocky lane and fen the sick man's wife opened the door father you come again the poor man is dead he cried he died an hour ago the old priest peter gilligan in grief swayed to and fro when you are gone he turned and died as merry as a bird the old priest peter gilligan he knelt him at that word he who hath made the night of stars for souls who tire and bleed sent one of his great angels down to help me in my need he who is wrapped in purple robes with planets in his care had pity on the least of things asleep upon a chair end of poem this recording is in the public domain A Ballad of Hell by John Davidson Read for LibriVox.org by Thomas Peter A letter from my love today, O oh, unexpected dear appeal! She struck a happy tear away And broke the crimson seal. My love, there is no help on earth, No help in heaven. The dead man's bell must toll our wedding. Our first hearth must be the well-paved floor of hell. The color died from out her face. Her eyes like ghostly candles shone. She cast dread looks about the place, then clenched her teeth and read right on. I may not pass the prison door. Here must I rot from day to day. Unless I wed whom I abhor. 
my cousin, Blanche of Valonquet. At midnight, with my dagger keen, I'll take my life. It must be so. Meet me in hell tonight, my queen, for weal and woe. She laughed, although her face was wan. She girded on her golden belt. She took her jeweled ivory fan and at her glowing missile knelt. Then rose. And am I mad? she said. She broke her fan, her belt untied. With leather girt herself instead and stuck a dagger at her side. She waited shuddering in her room till sleep had fallen on all the house she never flinched she faced her doom they too must sin to keep their vows then out into the night she went and stooping crept by hedge and tree her rosebush flung a snare of scent and caught a happy memory she fell and lay a minute's space. She tore the sward in her distress. The dewy grass refreshed her face. She rose and ran with lifted dress. She started like a morn-caught ghost once when the moon came out and stood to watch. The naked road she crossed and dived into the murmuring wood. The branches snatched her streaming cloak a live thing shrieked, she made no stay. She hurried to the trysting oak, right well she knew the way. Without a pause she bared her breast, and drove her dagger home, and fell, and lay like one that takes her rest, and died, and wakened up in hell. She bathed her spirit in the flame, and near the centre took her post, from all sides to her ears there came the dreary anguish of the lost. The devil started at her side, comely and tall and black as jet. I am young Malespina's bride. Has he come hither yet? My puppet, welcome to your bed. Is Malespina here? Not he. Tomorrow he must wed his cousin Blanche, my dear. You lie. He died with me tonight. Not he. It was a plot. You lie. My dear, I never lie outright. We died at midnight, he and I. The devil went. Without a groan, she, gathered up in one fierce prayer, took root in hell's midst all alone, and waited for him there. She dared to make herself at home amidst the wail, the uneasy stir, the blood-stained flame that filled the dome, scentless and silent, shrouded her. How long she stayed I cannot tell, but when she felt his perfidy, she marched across the floor of hell, and all the damned stood up to see. The devil stopped her at the brink. She shook him off. She cried, Away! My dear, you have gone mad, I think. I was betrayed. I will not stay. Across the weltering deep she ran. A stranger thing was never seen. The damned stood silent to a man. They saw the great gulf set between. To her it seemed a meadow fair, and flowers sprang up about her feet. She entered heaven, she climbed the stair, and knelt down at the mercy seat. Seraphs and saints with one great voice welcomed that soul that knew not fear. Amazed to find it could rejoice, hell raised a horse, half-human cheer. End of poem this recording is in the public domain. Be Strong by Malt B. Davenport Babcock, 1858-1901 to 1901. 
read for LibriVox.org. Be strong! We are not here to play, to dream, to drift. We have hard work to do and loads to lift. Shun not the struggle, face it, tis God's gift. Be strong! Say not. The days are evil, who's to blame? And fold the hands and acquiesce, oh shame! Stand up, speak out, and bravely in God's name. Be strong. It matters not how deep entrenched the wrong, how hard the battle goes, the day how long. Faint not, fight on. Tomorrow comes the song. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Birthday Verse Number 10 by J. S. Ogilvy. Read for LibriVox.org by Mike Overby, Parkland, Washington, on this his 24th birthday. On this birthday morn arise from thy placid slumber soon to meet love's longing eyes and greetings without number heaven's dearest gifts be thine to crown all earthly treasure for gifts that god gives unto thee know neither stint nor measure end of poem this recording is in the public domain bright star by john keats read for librivox dot org by rosemary de sapio bright star would i were steadfast as thou art not in lone splendor hung aloft the night and watching with eternal lids apart like nature's patient sleepless eremite the moving waters at their priest-like task of pure ablution round earth's human shores or gazing on the new soft fallen mask of snow upon the mountains and the moors no yet still steadfast still unchangeable pillowed upon my fair love's ripening breast to feel forever its soft fall and swell awake forever in a sweet unrest still still to hear her tender taken breath and so live ever, or else swoon to death. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. The Caged Skylark by Gerard Manley Hopkins Read for LibriVox.org by Bruce Kachuk As a dare gale skylark Scanted in a dull cage, man's mounting spirit in his bone house, mean house, dwells. That bird beyond the remembering his free fells, this in drudgery, day laboring out life's age. Though aloft on turf or perch or poor low stage, both sing sometimes the sweetest sweetest spells yet both droop deadly sometimes in their cells or ring their barriers in bursts of fear or rage not that the sweet fowl song fowl needs no rest why hear him hear him babble and drop down to his nest but his own nest wild nest no prison man's spirit will be flesh bound when found at best but unencumbered meadow down is not distressed for a rainbow footing it nor he for his bones risen end of poem this recording is in the public domain. Calvary by Frederick George Scott Read for LibriVox.org by Larry Wilson 
O sorrowful heart of humanity, foiled in thy fight for dominion, bowed with the burden of emptiness, blackened with passion and woe. Here is a faith that will bear thee on waft of omnipotent pinion up to the heaven of victory, there to be known and to know. Here is the vision of Calvary, crowned with the world's revelation, throned in the grandeur of gloom and the thunders that quicken the dead. A meteor of hope in the darkness shines forth like a new constellation, dividing the night of our sorrow, revealing a path as we tread. Now are the portals of death by the feet of the conqueror entered, flames of the sun in the setting roll over the city of doom. A robe in imperial purple, the body triumphantly centered, naked and white between thieves and mid ghosts that had crept from the tomb. O soul, thou art lost in immensity, craving for light and despairing. Here is the hand of the crucified, pulses of love in its veins. Human as ours in its touch, with the sinews of deity bearing the zones of pendulous planets, the weight of the winds and the rains. Here in the heart of the crucified find thee a refuge and hiding. Love at the core of the universe, guidance in space in the night centuries pass like a flood but the rock of our strength is abiding grounded in depths of eternity girt with a mantle of light lo as we wonder and worship the night of the doubts that conceal him rolls from the face of the dawn till his rays through the cloud fissures slope vapors that hid are condensed to the dews of his grace that reveal him and shine with his light on the hills as we mount in the splendor of hope End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. The Chaos by Gerard Knowles Trinité, read for LibriVox.org by phone. Dearest creature in creation, studying English pronunciation, I will teach you in my verse. Sounds like corpse, core, horse, and worse. It will keep you, Susie, busy. Make your head with heat grow dizzy. Tear and I, your dress you'll tear. So shall I, oh, hear my prayer. Pray, console your loving poet. Make my coat look new, dear, sew it. Just compare heart, beard, and herd. Dies and diet, lord and word. Sword and sword, retain and Britain. Mind the letter, how it's written. Maid has not the sound of bad. Say, sad, pay, paid laid but plaid now i surely will not plague you with such words as vague and ague but be careful how you speak say break stake but bleak and streak previous precious fusia via pipe snipe recipe and choir cloven oven how and low script receipt shoe poem toe hear me say devoid of trickery Daughter, laughter, and terpsichore, typhoid, measles, topsails, isles, exiles, similes, reviles, holy, holy, signal, signing, thems, examining, combining, scholar, vicar, and cigar, solar, mica, war, and far, from desire, desirable, admirable, from admire, lumber, plumber, beer, but briar. Chatham, Brom, renowned but known, knowledge, done but gone and tone. One, anemone, balmoral, kitchen, lichen, laundry, laurel. Gertrude, German, wind and mind, seen, malpomony, mankind. Tortoise, turquoise, chamois, leather, reading, reading, heathen, heather. This phonetic labyrinth gives moss, gross, brook, brooch, ninth and plinth. Billet does not end like ballet, bouquet, wallet, mallet, chalet. Blood and flood are not like food, nor is mould like should and wood. Banquet is not nearly parquet, which is said to rhyme with darky. Viscous, viscount, load and broad, toward, to forward, to reward. And your pronunciation's okay when you correctly say croquet. Rounded, wounded, grieve and sieve, friend and fiend, alive and live. 
liberty library heave and heaven rachel ache moustache eleven we say hallowed but aloud people leopard toad but vowed mark the difference moreover between mover plover dover leeches breeches wise precise chalice but police and lice camel constable and stable principal disciple label petal penal and canal wait surmise plate promise pal suit sweet run circuit conduit rhyme with shirk it and beyond it but it is not hard to tell why it's pole mole but pal mal muscle muscular jail iron timber climber bullion lion warm and storm chaise chaos chair senator spectator mare ivy privy famous clamour and enamour rhyme with hammer pussy hussy and possess desert but desert address golf wolf countenance lieutenants hoist in lieu of flags left penance river rival tomb bomb comb doll and roll and sum and home stranger does not rhyme with anger neither does devour with clangour soul but foul and gaunt but ant font front want want grand and grant shoes goes does now first say finger and then singer ginger linger real sell mauve gauze and gauge marriage foliage mirage age query does not rhyme with fairy nor does fury sound like berry dust lost post and doth cloth loath job job blossom bosom oath though the difference seems little we say actual but fittle seat sweat chaste cast lee eight height put nut granite but unite reefer does not rhyme but deffer pfeffer does and zephyr heifer dull bull geoffrey george at late hint pint senate but sedate scenic arabic pacific science conscience scientific tour but hour and succour four gas alas in arkansas sea idea guinea area psalm maria but malaria youth south southern cleanse and clean doctrine turpentine marine compare alien with italian dandelion with battalion sally with ally yea and ye i i i i we key key say aver but ever fever neither leisure skein receiver never guess it is not safe we say calves faves half but rafe heron granary canary crevice in device but airy face but preface but efface phlegm phlegmatic ass glass base large but target gin give virgin ought out joust and scour but scourging ear but urn and wear and tear do not rhyme with here but air seven is right but so is even hyphen ruffin nephew stephen monkey donkey clerk and jerk asp grasp wasp and cork and work pronunciation think of psyche is a paling stout and spiky won't it make you lose your wits writing groats and saying grits it is a dark abyss or tunnel strewn with stones like rowlock gunnel islington and isle of wight housewife verdict and indict don't you think so reader rather saying lather bather father finally which rhymes with enough though through plough cuff hoe or tough hiccup has the sound of cup my advice is give it up end of poem this recording is in the public domain a day of days by christina rossetti read for lupifox dot org by phone i wish i could remember that first day first hour first moment of your meeting me 
if bright or dim the season it might be summer or winter for aught i can say so unrecorded did it slip away so blind was i to see and to foresee so dull to mark the budding of my tree that would not blossom yet for many a may if only i could recollect it such a day of days and let it come and go as traceless as a thaw of bygone snow it seemed to mean so little meant so much if only now i could recall that touch first touch of hand in hand did one but know end of poem this recording is in the public domain evening fantasy by friedrich hudelin translated by charles wharton stark read for LibriVox.org by newgate novelist before his hut reposes in restful shade the ploughman wreaths of smoke from his half ascend and sweet to wanderers comes the tone of evening bells from the peaceful village the sailor too puts into the haven now in distant cities cheerily dies away the busy tumult in the arbour gleams the festal repast of friendship but whither i in labour for slight reward we mortals live in alternate rest and toil contentment dwells but why then sleeps not hid in my bosom the thorn unsparing the evening heaven blooms as with springtime's hue uncounted bloom the roses the golden world seems wrapped in peace oh bear me thither purple wrought clouds and may for me there both love and grief dissolve in the joyous light but see as if dispelled by the foolish prayer the wonder fades tis dark and lonely under the heaven i stand as erstwhile come then to me soft sleep overmuch requires the heart and yet thou too at the last shalt fade o youth thou restless dream pursuer peaceful and happy shall age then follow end of poem this recording is in the public domain the first christian by odell shepherd read for LibriVox.org by larry wilson a little wandering wind went up the hill it had a lonely voice as though it knew what it should find before it came to where the broken body of him that had been christ hung in the ruddy glow a bow shot down the bleak rock shouldered hill the soldiery had piled a fire and when the searching wind came stronger from the distant sea and dashed the shadows and the gleam together songs of battle and lust were blown along the slope mingled with clash of swords and crease and shield but on the women sitting by the cross even she whose life had been as gravely sweet and sheltered as a lily's did not flinch her face was buried in her shrouding cloak and she who knew too sorrowfully well the cruelty and bitterness of life heard it not she sat erect her shadowy hair blown back along the darkness and her eyes that searched the distant spaces of the night splendid and glowing with an inward joy and at the darkest hour came three or four from round the fire and would have driven them thence but one who knew them gazing in their eyes said nay it is his mother and his love the scarlet magdalena let them be so in the gloom beside the glimmering cross beneath the broken body of him they loved they wept and watched the lily and the rose at last the deep low voice of magdalen toned like a distant bell broke on the hush we are so weak what can poor women do 
so pitifully frail god pity us how he did pity us he understood out of his own great strength he understood how it might feel to be so very weak to be a tender lily of the field to be a lamb lost in the windy hills far from the fold and from the shepherd's voice to be a child with no strength only love and ah he knew if ever a man can know what tis to be a woman and to live strive how she may to outsoar and overcome tied to this too frail body of too fair earth oh had i been a man to shield him then in his great need with loving strong right arm one of the twelve ha ah, of that noble twelve that ran away and two made mock of him or else betrayed him ere they ran ah no and yet a man's strength with a woman's love that might have served him somewhat ere the end then with a weary voice the mother said what can we do but only watch and weep sit with weak hands and watch while strong men rend and break and ruin bringing all to naught the beauty we have nearly died to make it is not true to say that he was strong he did not claim the kingdom that was his he did not even seek for wealth and power he did not win a woman's love and get strong children to live after him and all that strong men strive for he passed heedless by because that he was weak i loved him so for that and for his soft and gentle ways the tender patient calling of his voice and that dear trick of smiling with his eyes ah no i have had dreams a mother's dreams but now i cannot dream them any more i sorrowed little as the happy days sped by and by that still the fair-haired lad who lay at first beside me in the stall the cattle stall outside jerusalem found no great throne to dazzle his mother's eye he was so good a workman axe and saw did surely suit him better than a sword i was content if only he would wed some village girl of little nazareth and get me children with his own slow smile deep thoughtful eyes and golden kingly brow it seems but yesterday he played among the shavings strewn on joseph's workshop floor the sunlight of the morning slanted through the window twas in springtime and across the bench where joseph sat and then it lay in golden glory on the boy's bright hair and on the shavings that were golden too i saw him through the open door i thought my little king has found his golden crown but unto joseph i said not at all but now on me he won no woman's love nor loved one either as most men call love and so he had no child and he is gone and i am left without him alone so by her son's pale broken body mourned the mother dreaming on departed days and as with one who looks into the west watching the embers of the outburned day crumble and cool and slowly droop and fade and will not take the darkling eastward path where lies his way until the last faint glow has left the sky and the earthly stars shine forth so did her dream cling to the ruined past and all the joy they had in nazareth before the years of doubt and trouble came then while loud laughter sounded up the hill where yet that ribald crew sang o'er the wine she bowed her head above her cradling arms and softly sang as to herself the songs of israel that once had served her well to soothe the wakeful child but magdalen arose upon her feet and tossed her cloak back from the midnight of her wind-blown hair and lifted up her eyes into the dark as though beyond this circle of all our woe to read a hidden meaning in the stars ay it is dark she said the night comes on he was the sunshine of our little day 
the clouds unsettled softly and we saw ladders of glory climbing into light unspeakable with dazzling interchange of majesties and powers but suddenly the tides of darkness whelm us round again and this drear dwindled earth becomes once more what it has ever been a core of shade and steaming vapor spinning in the dark a deeper clot of blackness in the void the night comes on tis hard to pierce the dark and if to me who loved him whom he loved though well thou sayest not as most men call love far harder will it be for those who hold in memory no gesture of his hand no haunting echo of his patient voice nor that dear trick of smiling with his eyes o ceaseless tramp of armies down the years o maddened cries of christ and son of mary while o'er the crying screams the hurtling death thou gentle shepherd of the quiet fold mild man of sorrows hast thou done this thing who camest not to bring peace but a sword ah no not thou but only our childishness the pitifully childish heart of man that cannot learn and know beyond a little the priests and captains and the little kings will tear each other at the throat and cry thus said he lived he swear it or thou diest but these shall pass and perish in the dark while the lorn strays outcasts of the world the souls whose pain has seared their pride to dust and burned away for love to enter in these only know his meaning and shall live so it is with one whose feet have trod the valley of the shadow who has seen his dearest lord into endless night all music holds for him a deeper strain of nobler meaning and the flush of dawn high wind at noonday crumbling sunset gold and the dear pathetic look of children's eyes all beauty pierces closer to his heart yea thou thyself pale youth upon the cross the godlike strength of thee was rooted deep in human weakness even she who bore thee seeing the man too nearly missed the god erring as fits the mother some will say in coming years i feel it in my heart that thou didst face thy death a conscious god knowing all mighty hands were stretched to snatch and lift thee from the greedy clutching grave falsely forgetting dark gethsemane not knowing as i know what doubt assailed thy human heart until the latest breath ah what a trumpery death what mockery and mere theatric mimicry of pain if thou didst surely know thou couldst not die thou didst not know and whether even now thy straying ghost like some great moth of night blown seaward through the shadow flies and drifts along dim coasts and headlands of the dark a homeless wanderer up and down the void or whether indeed thou art enthroned above in light and life i know not this i know that in the moment of sheer certainty my soul will die no on thy spirit lay all the dark weight and mystery of pain and all our human doubts and flickering hope deathless despairs and treasuries of tears gropings of spirit blindfold by the flesh and grapplings with the fiend else were thy breath less like a god's than even mine may be thou broken mother who can see in him only the quiet man the needful child and most of all the babe of bethlehem let it suffice thee thy reward is great who loveth god that never hath loved man who knoweth man but cometh to know god thou sacred sorrowing mother canst thou learn thou who hast gone so softly in god's sight of me the scarlet woman of old days come let us walk together thou and i apart we see him darkly through a glass together we shall surely see aright bring thou thine innocence thy stainless soul and i will bring deep lore of suffering my dear-bought wisdom of defeat and pain for out of these may come believe it thou sanctities not like thine 
but fit to bear the bitter storms and whirlwinds of this world i out of evil often springeth good and sweetest honey from the lion's mouth and that he knew that very thing he meant when he withdrew from me the pits of shame tis i who see god shining through the man i see the deity the godlike strength in his supreme capacity for pain nor have i known the cruel love of men these many years to err when now i say this man loved not like men but like a god thou broken mother weep not for the child mourn not the man acclaim the risen christ she turned and touched the other lovingly then stooped and pressed into her darkened face the mother slept forspent and overdue by weariness and woe too great to bear she gently smiled so it is best she said tall and elate she stood her shadowy hair blown back along the darkness of her eyes that searched the distant spaces of the night splendid and glowing with an inward joy and over that dark hill of tragedy and triumph victory and dull despair over the sleeping roman soldiery over three dark crosses and the two who loved him most the lily and the rose shone still and clear the great compassionate stars End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. From Pent Up Aching Rivers by Walt Whitman, read for LibriVox.org by Matis Yahoo. From Pent Up Aching Rivers, from that of myself, without which I were nothing, from what I am determined to make illustrious, even if I stand sole among men. From my own voice resonant, singing the phallus, singing the song of procreation, singing the need of superb children, and therein superb grown people, singing the muscular urge and the blending, singing the bedfellow song, O oh, resistless yearning, O oh, for any in each the body correlative attracting, O oh, for you, whoever you are, your correlative body, Oh, it more than all else, you delighting. From the hungry gnaw that eats me night and day, from native moments, from bashful pains, singing them, seeking something yet unfound, though I have diligently sought it many a long year, singing the true song of the soul, fitful at random, renascent with grossest nature or among animals of that of them and what goes with them my poems informing of the smell of apples and lemons of the pairing of birds of the wet of woods of the lapping of waves of the mad pushes of waves upon the land i them chanting the overture lightly sounding the strain anticipating the welcome nearness, the sight of the perfect body, the swimmer swimming naked in the bath, or motionless on his back lying and floating, the female form approaching, I pensive, love flesh tremulous aching, the divine list for myself or you or for anyone making, the face, the limbs, the index from head to foot, and what it arouses, the mystic deliria, the madness amorous, the utter abandonment. Hark close and still what I now whisper to you. I love you. O oh, you entirely possess me. O oh, that you and I escape from the rest and go utterly off, free and lawless, two hawks in the air, two fishes swimming in the sea, not more lawless than we. The furious storm through me careering, I passionately trembling, the oath of the inseparableness of two together, of the woman that loves me and whom I love more than my life, that oath swearing. Oh, I willingly stake all for you. Oh, let me be lost if it must be so. Oh, you and I, what is it to us what the rest do or think? What is all else to us? only that we enjoy each other and exhaust each other if it must be so from the master 
the pilot I yield the vessel to, the general commanding me, commanding all, from him permission taking, from time the program hastening, I have loitered too long as it is, from sex, from the warp, and from the wolf, from the privacy, from frequent repinings alone, from plenty of persons near, and yet the right person not near, from the soft sliding of hands over me, and thrusting of fingers through my hair and beard, from the long sustained kiss upon the mouth or bosom, from the close pressure that makes me or any man drunk, fainting with excess, from what the divine husband knows, from the work of fatherhood, from exultation, victory, and relief, from the bedfellow's embrace in the night, from the act poems of eyes, hands, hips, and bosoms, from the cling of the trembling arm, from the bending curve and the clinch, from side by side the pliant coverlet off-throwing, from the one so unwilling to have me leave, and me just as unwilling to leave, yet a moment, O oh, tender waiter, and I return, from the hour of shining stars and dropping dews, from the night a moment I emerging, flitting out, celebrate you, act divine, and you children prepared for, and you stalwart loins. End of From Pent Up Aching Rivers. This recording is in the public domain. Humdrum by Carl Sandburg. Read for LibriVox.org by Winston Tharp. If I had a million lives to live, and a million deaths to die, in a million humdrum worlds, I'd like to change my name and have a new house number to go by each and every time I died and started life all over again. I wouldn't want the same name every time and the same old house number always, dying a million deaths, dying one by one a million times. Would you? Or you? Or you? End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Hyperion Song of Fate by Friedrich Hulderlin, translated by Charles Wharton Stork, read for LibriVox.org by Newgate Novelist. Ye wander there in the light on flower-soft fields, ye blessed immortal spirits. Radiant, godlike zephyrs touch you as gently as the hand of a master might touch the awed lute string. Free of fate as the slumbering infant, breathe the divine ones. Guarded well in the firm sheathed bud, blooms eternal each happy soul, and their rapture lit eyes shine with a tranquil, unchanging lustre. But we, tis our portion, we never may be at rest. They stumble, they vanish, the suffering mortals, hurtling from one hard hour to another, like waves that are driven from cliffside to cliffside, endlessly down the uncertain abyss. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. I wake and feel the fell of dark, not day. By Gerard Manley Hopkins. Read for LibriVox.org by Bruce Kachuk. I wake and feel the fell of dark, not day. What hours, oh, what black hours we have spent this night! What sights you, heart, saw, ways you went, and more must in yet longer light's delay. With witness I speak this, but where I say hours, I mean years, mean life, and my lament is cries countless 
cries like dead letters sent to dearest him that lives alas away i am gall i am heartburn god's most deep decree bitter would have me taste my taste was me bones built in me flesh filled blood brimmed the curse self yeast of spirit a dull dough sours i see the lost are like this and their scourge to be as i am mine their sweating selves but worse end of poem this recording is in the public domain Kate Shelley by Eugene J. Hall Read for LibriVox.org by Colleen McMahon Have you heard how a girl saved the lightning express Of Kate Shelley, whose father was killed on the road? Were he living today, he'd be proud to possess such a daughter as Kate. Ah, t'was grit that she showed On that terrible evening when Donahue's train Jumped the bridge and went down in the darkness and rain. She was only eighteen, but a woman in size with a figure as graceful and lithe as a doe, with peach-blossom cheeks and with violet eyes, and teeth and complexion like new-fallen snow, with a nature unspoiled and unblemished by art, with a generous soul and a warm, noble heart. Tis evening, the darkness is dense and profound. Men linger at home by their bright blazing fires. The wind wildly howls with a horrible sound and shrieks through the vibrating telegraph wires. The fierce lightning flashes along the dark sky. The rain falls in torrents. The river rolls by. The scream of a whistle. The rush of a train. The sound of a bell. A mysterious light that flashes and flares through the fast-falling rain. A rumble. A roar. Shrieks of human affright. The falling of timbers. The space of a breath. A splash in the river. Then darkness and death. Kate Shelley recoils at the terrible crash, the sounds of destruction she happens to hear. She springs to the window, she throws up the sash, and listens and looks with a feeling of fear. The tall treetops groan, and she hears the faint cry of a drowning man down in the river nearby. Her heart feebly flutters, her features grow wan, and then, through her soul in a moment there flies, a forethought that gives her the strength of a man she turns to her trembling old mother and cries, I must save the express, t'will be here in an hour. Then out through the door disappears in the shower. She flies down the track through the pitiless rain. She reaches the river, the water below whirls and sees through the timbers. She shudders again. The bridge, to Moingona, God help me to go. Then closely about her she gathers her gown, and on the wet ties with a shiver sinks down. Then, carefully, over the timbers, she creeps, on her hands and knees, almost holding her breath. The loud thunder peals, and the wind wildly sweeps, and struggles to hurry her downward to death. But the thought of the train to destruction so near removes from her soul every feeling of fear. With the blood dripping down from each torn, bleeding limb, slowly over the timbers her dark way she feels. Her fingers grow numb, and her head seems to swim. Her strength is fast failing. She staggers. She reels. She falls. Oh, the danger is over at last. Her feet touch the earth, and the long bridge is past. In an instant, new life seems to come to her form. She springs to her feet and forgets her despair. On, on, to Mangona, she faces the storm. She reaches the station. The keeper is there. Save the lightning express. No, hang out the red light. There's death on the bridge at the river tonight. Out flashes the signal light, rosy and red. Then sounds the loud roar of the swift coming train. The hissing of steam, and there, brightly ahead, the gleam of a headlight illumines the rain. Down breaks, shrieks the whistle, defiant and shrill. She heeds the red signal. She slackens. She's still. Ah, noble Kate Shelley, your mission is done. Your deed that dark night will not fade from our gaze, 
an endless renown you have worthily won let the nation be just and accord you its praise let your name let your fame and your courage declare what a woman can do and a woman can dare end of poem this recording is in the public domain long island sound by emma lazarus read for LibriVox.org by winston tharp i see it as it looked one afternoon in august by a fresh soft breeze o'erblown the swiftness of the tide the light thereon a far-off sail white as a crescent moon the shining waters with pale current strewn the quiet fishing smacks, the eastern cove, the semicircle of its dark green grove, the luminous grasses and the merry sun in the grave sky, the sparkle far and wide, laughter of unseen children, cheerful chirp of crickets and low lisp of rippling tide. Light summer clouds, fantastical as sleep, changing unnoted while I gazed thereon. All these fair sounds and sights I made my own. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Mariposa by Edna St. Vincent Millay Read for LibriVox.org by C. Gilligan Berryman August 12, 2018 Butterflies are white and blue In this field we wander through Suffer me take your hand Death comes in a day or two All the things we never knew Will be ashes in that hour Mark the transient butterfly How he hangs upon the flower Suffer him to take your hand Suffer me to cherish you Till the dawn is in the sky Whether I be false or true Death comes in a day or two. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Now by Robert Browning, read for LibriVox.org by Newgate Novelist. Out of your whole life give but a moment, all of your life that has gone before, all to come after it, so you ignore so you make perfect the present condense in a rapture of rage for perfection's endowment thought and feeling and soul and sense merged in a moment which gives me at last you around me for once you beneath me above me me sure that despite of time future time past this tick of our lifetimes one moment you love me how long such suspension may linger ah sweet the moment eternal just that and no more when ecstasy's utmost we clutch at the core while cheeks burn arms open eyes shut and lips meet end of poem this recording is in the public domain romance by W. J. Turner. Read for LibriVox.org. By Thomas Peter. When I was but thirteen or so, I went into a golden land. Chimborazo, Cotopaxi, took me by the hand. My father died, my brother too. They passed like fleeting dreams. I stood where Popocatapetl in the sunlight gleams. I dimly heard the master's voice and boys far off at play. Chimborazo, Cotopaxi, had stolen me away. I walked in a great golden dream to and fro from school. Shining Popocatapetl, the dusty streets did rule. I walked home with a gold dark boy and never a word I'd say. Chimborazo, Cotopaxi, had taken my speech away. I gazed 
Entranced upon his face, fairer than any flower. O oh, shining Popocatapetl, it was thy magic hour. The houses, people, traffic seemed thin fading dreams by day. Chimborazo, Cotopaxi, they had stolen my soul away. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Santa Cruz by Philip Freeman Read for LibriVox.org by Sonia Santa Cruz Betwixt old cancer and the midway line In happiest climate lies this envied isle Trees bloom throughout the year, soft breezes blow and fragrant flora wears a lasting smile cool woodland streams from shaded cliffs descend the dripping rock no want of moisture knows supplied by springs that on the skies depend that fountain feeding as the current flows sweet verdant isle through thy dark woods i rove and learn the nature of each native tree the fustic heart the poisonous manchineel which for its fragrant apple pleaseth thee the lowly mangrove fond of watery soil the white-barked palm-tree rising high in air the mastic in the woods you may descry tamarind and lofty bay-trees flourish there sweet orange groves in lonely valleys rise and drop their fruits unnoticed and unknown the cooling acid limes in hedges grow the juicy lemons swell in shades their own soft spongy plums on trees white spreading hang bell apples here suspended shade the ground plump granadillas and guavas grey with melons in each plain and vale abound but chief the glory of these indian isles springs from the sweet uncloying sugar-cane hence comes the planter's wealth hence commerce sends such floating piles to traverse half the main whoever thou art that leaves thy native shore and shall to fair west india climates come taste not the enchanting plant to taste forbear if ever thou wouldst reach thy much-loved home End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. A Seasonable Parody by Anonymous. Read for LibriVox.org by Sonia. A Seasonable Parody. Three women went waddling out into the surf, out into the surf at Newport Town. Each wore a bath suit of the very best costing as much as a wedding gown for men must work and women must lave and what men earn their wives don't save though husbands they be moaning three brokers sat up at three high desks and balanced their books as the sun went down each poring over ledgers that wouldn't come straight each wrapped in a study disgustingly brown for men must sweat and women keep cool and woman will ever be fashion's fool though husbands they be moaning three names are struck from the gold board's books three brokers signboards are taken down three men are busy seeing their friends borrowing money to get out of town for men must break if women must waste and it costs a deal to be people of taste so good-bye to the fools and their moaning. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. The Smile by William Blake. Read for LibriVox.org by Winston Tharp. There is a smile of love, and there is a smile of deceit. And there is a smile of smiles in which these two smiles meet. And there is a frown of hate, and there is a frown of disdain, and there is a frown of frowns which you strive to forget in vain. 
for it sticks in the heart's deep core, and it sticks in the deep backbone, and no smile that ever was smiled, but only one smile alone, that betwixt the cradle and grave it only once smiled can be, and when it once is smiled, there's an end to all misery. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Sonnet 64 by William Shakespeare Read for LibriVox.org by Beverly Anderson When I have seen by time's fell hand defaced The rich proud cost of outworn buried age When sometime lofty towers I see down raise and brass eternal slave to mortal rage. When I have seen the hungry ocean gain advantage on the kingdom of the shore, and the firm soil win of the watery main, increasing store with loss and loss with store. When I have seen such interchange of state, or state itself confounded to decay, Ruin hath taught me thus to ruminate that time will come and take my love away. This thought is as a death which cannot choose but weep to have that which it fears to lose. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Sonnet 65 by William Shakespeare Read for LibriVox.org by Beverly Anderson Since brass nor stone nor earth nor boundless sea but sad mortality o'ersways their power, how with this rage shall beauty hold a plea whose action is no stronger than a flower? Oh, how shall summer's honey breath hold out against the rackful siege of battering days, when rocks impregnable are not so stout, nor gates of steel so strong but time decays? O oh, fearful meditation, where, alack, shall time's best jewel from time's chest lie hid? Or what strong hand can hold his swift foot back, or who his spoil of beauty can forbid. O oh, none, unless this miracle have might, that in black ink my love may still shine bright. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Sonnet 55 by William Shakespeare Read for LibriVox.org by Beverly Anderson Not marble nor the gilded monuments of princes shall outlive this powerful rhyme, but you shall shine more bright in these contents than unswept stone besmeared with sluttish time. When wasteful war shall statues overturn, And broils root out the work of masonry, Nor mars his sword, nor war's swift fire Shall burn the living record of your memory. Gainst death and all oblivious enmity Shall you pace forth. Your praise shall still find room Even in the eyes of all posterity, that wear this world out to the ending doom. So, till the judgment that yourself arise, you live in this and dwell in lover's eyes. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Spleen 
by Charles Baudelaire. Read for LibriVox.org by Chuck Williamson. I'm like some king in whose corrupted veins flows aged blood, who rules a land of rains, who, young in years, is old in all distress, who flees good counsel to find weariness among his dogs and playthings who is stirred neither by hunting hound nor hunting bird whose weary face emotion moves no more even when his people die before his door his favorite jester's most fantastic wile upon that sick cruel face can raise no smile the courtly dames to whom all kings are good can lighten this young skeleton's dull mood no more with shameless toilets in his gloom even his lilied bed becomes a tomb the sage who takes his gold assays in vain to purge away the old corrupted strain his baths of blood that in the days of old the romans used when their hot blood grew cold will never warm this dead man's bloodless pains for green lethean water fills his veins end of poem this recording is in the public domain A Thrush Before Dawn by Alice Maynell Read for LibriVox.org by Thomas Peter A voice peals in this end of night A phrase of notes resembling stars Single and spiritual notes of light What call they at my window bars? The south, the past, the day to be An ancient infelicity Darkling deliberate what sings this wonderful one alone at peace what wilder things than song what things sweeter than youth clearer than greece dearer than italy untold delight and freshness centuries old and first first loves a multitude the exaltation of their pain ancestral childhood long renewed and midnights of invisible rain and gardens gardens night and day gardens and childhood all the way what middle ages passionate o oh passionless voice what distant bells lodged in the hills what palace state illyrian for it speaks it tells without desire without dismay some morrow and some yesterday all natural things but more whence came this yet remoter mystery how do these starry notes proclaim a graver still divinity this hope this sanctity of fear o oh, innocent throat o oh, human ear end of poem this recording is in the public domain. Two by Anonymous Read for LibriVox.org by Sonia Two for the Mirror Yes, tis to thee, love, I waken the string. Yes, tis to thee, love, I only would sing. And in thine eyes, love, I ask but to shine with softest affection as thou dost in mine dearest and kindest i ask but to be cherished by thee love as thou art by me then shall our moments glide sunnily o'er and blessed with each other we sigh for no more wife of thy bosom by thee loved alone no dearer blessing this proud world can own all its attractions delighted i'll fly 
for thee love to live and with thee love to die end of poem this recording is in the public domain to the average man by wallace irwin read for LibriVox.org by philip gould the average man wears the average clothes and the average hat on his head he eats at a table and sits on a chair and normally sleeps on a bed for he scorns the eccentric and never would dare to sleep on a table or eat on a chair the average man seeks the corner saloon omeric refreshment to find but shunning the tipple he wanders to church where he is devoutly inclined nor does he expect to find whiskey or dice in the place that is famed for religious advice the average man says the average things and sings just the average songs he's deucedly fond of the average girl for whom he unceasingly longs and his vices and virtues too many to tell are oddly at odds but they average well statistics declare that the average man finds the average woman and mates that the average family children all told is something like two and three eighths though fractional children disturb and appall the average man isn't worried at all the average man reads the average books and sometimes he writes em i hear he's neither a genius a knave nor a fool in fact he despises the queer for if he departed the average plan he'd cease to be known as the average man but deep in the breast of the average man the passions of ages are swirled and the loves and the hates of the average man are as old as the heart of the world for the thought of the race as we live and we die is in keeping the man and the average high End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. The Tryst by Edith Wharton. Part of the Book of the Homeless. Read for LibriVox.org by Mike Overby, Parkland, Washington. I said to the woman, Whence do you come? With your bundle in your hand. She said, in the north I made my home, where slow streams fatten the fruitful loam, and the endless sweet fields run like foam to the edge of the endless sand. I said, What look have your houses there, and the rivers that glass your sky? Do the steeples that call your people to prayer lift fretted fronts to the silver air, and the stones of your streets are they washed and fair when the Sunday folk go by? My house is ill-defined, she said for it has no roof but the sky. The tongue is torn from the steeple head, the streets are foul with the slime of the dead, and all the rivers run poison red with the bodies drifting by. I said, Is there none to come at your call in all this throng astray? They shot my husband against the wall, and my child, she said, too little to crawl, held up its hands to catch the ball when the gun muzzle turned its way. I said, There are countries far from here, where the friendly church bells call, and fields where the rivers run cool and clear, and the streets where the weary may walk without fear, and the quiet bed with a green tree near, to sleep at the end of it all. She answered, Your land is too remote, and what if I chance to roam, when the bells fly back to the steeple's throat, and the sky with banners is all afloat, and the streets of my city rock like a boat with the tramp of her men come home? I shall crouch by the door till the bolt is down and then go to my dead. Where my husband fell I will put a stone, and mother a child instead of my own, and stand and laugh on my bare hearthstone when the king rides by, she said. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Vagabondia by Bliss Carmen and Richard Hovey Read for LibriVox.org by Chuck Williamson. Off with the fetters that chafe and restrain, off with the chain, 
here art and letters music and wine and myrtle and wanda the winsome witches blithely combine here are true riches here is golconda here are the indies here we are free free as the wind is free as the sea free hoopla what have we to do with the way of the pharisee we go or we stay at our own sweet will we think as we say and we say or keep still at our own sweet will at our own sweet will here we are free to be good or bad sane or mad merry or grim as the mood may be free as the whim of a spook on a spree free to be oddities not mere commodities stupid and saleable wholly available ranged upon shelves each with his puny form in the same uniform cramped and disabled we are not labeled we are ourselves here is the real here is the ideal laughable hardship met and forgot glory of bardship world's bloom and world's blot the shock and the jostle the mock and the push but hearts like the throstle a joy in the bush wits that would merrily laugh away wrong throats that would verily melt hell in song what though the dimes be elusive as rhymes be and bessie with finger uplifted is warning that breakfast next morning a subject she's scorning is mighty uncertain what care we linger a moment to kiss no time's amiss to a vagabond's ardor thee finish the larder and pull down the curtain unless ere the kiss come black richard or bliss come or tom with a flag on or carl with a jag on then up and after the joy of the night with the hounds of laughter to follow the flight of the foxfoot hours that double and run through breaks and bowers of jolly and fun with the comrade heart for a moment's play and the comrade heart for a heavier day and the comrade heart forever and a for the joy of wine is not for long and the joy of song is a dream of shine but the comrade heart shall outlast art and a woman's love the fame thereof but wine for a sign of the love we bring and song for an oath that love is king and both and both for his worshipping then up and away till the break of day with a heart that's merry and a tom and jerry and a dairy down dairy what's that you say you highly respectable buyers and sellers we should be decenter not as we please enter custom frugality use and morality and the delectable depths of wine cellars midnights of revel and noondays of song is it so wrong go to the devil i tell you that we while you are smirking and lying and shirking life's duty of duties honest sincerity we are in verity free free to rejoice in blisses in beauties free as the voice of the wind as it passes free as the bird and the weft of the grasses free as the word of the sun to the sea free end of poem this recording is in the public domain in the valley of the elwe by gerard manley hopkins read for LibriVox.org by bruce Kachuk. i remember a house where all were good to me 
god knows deserving no such thing comforting smell breathed at very entering fetched fresh as i suppose off some sweet wood that cordial air made those kind people a hood all over as a bevy of eggs the mothering wing will or mild nights the new morsels of spring why it seemed of course seemed of right it should lovely the woods waters meadows combs vales all the air things wear that build this world of whales only the inmate does not correspond god lover of souls swaying considerate scales complete thy creature dear oh where it fails being mighty a master being a father and fond end of poem this recording is in the public domain where the west begins by arthur chapman eighteen seventy three to nineteen thirty five read for librivox dot org out where the hand clasps a little stronger out where the smile dwells a little longer that's where the west begins out where the sun's a little brighter where the snow that falls is a trifle whiter where the bonds of home are a wee bit tighter that's where the west begins out where the skies are a trifle bluer out where friendship's a little truer that's where the west begins out where the fresher breeze is blowing where there is laughter in every streamlet flowing where there's more of reaping and less of sowing that's where the west begins out where the world is in the making where fewer hearts with despair are aching that's where the west begins where there is more of singing and less of sighing where there is more of giving and less of buying and a man makes friends without half trying that's where the west begins end of poem this recording is in the public domain